Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nailus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our bleeding and coagulation playlist. Today we'll talk about warfarin, because in the previous video we have finished talking about heparin. So, let's get started. Let me answer questions of previous videos. Question 34. Mention at least 5 diseases with increased D-dimer. I'll give you 10 diseases, boy. Let's start with two Ds. D-I-C, D-V-T, and then surgery sepsis liver disease kidney disease fibrinolytic disorder fibrinolytic drug malignancy pregnancy and then two complications of pregnancy preeclampsia and eclampsia what is the difference between preeclampsia and eclampsia eclampsia has seizure but preeclampsia does not however both of them can have hypertension proteinuria and end organ damage what is the drug of choice for DVT? It's the low molecular weight heparin, even better than the unfractionated heparin. What if hit happened? Stop the low molecular weight heparin and hit me with ergatroban. As you know, coagulation involves vasoconstriction, primary hemostasis, secondary hemostasis, and fibrinolysis. Primary hemostasis, if you want to inhibit them using medications, these are called the antiplatelet drugs, such as cyclooxygenase inhibitors, P2Y12 inhibitors, GP2B3 inhibitors, and phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors. If you want to tamper with the secondary hemostasis, you can use drugs that are called anticoagulants, and we have four groups. The heparins, we have discussed them before, warfarin, which is today's topic, direct thrombin inhibitor, and factor 10A inhibitor. Let's talk about warfarin. For you to understand warfarin, you need to understand vitamin K. Here's vitamin K, which is active. This vitamin K is essential for gamma carboxylation, which is necessary for the activation of coagulation factors, specifically factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, also protein C, protein S, and protein Z. When vitamin K performs its job, it goes back to the inactive form. How do we replenish and reactivate the vitamin K? You need an enzyme called epoxide reductase. Warfarin will inhibit this enzyme. Now you have no epoxide reductase. Vitamin K will never be active. It will remain inactive. Therefore, gamma carboxylation is history. You can kiss goodbye to factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, protein C, S, and Z. Let's make it more sophisticated. Here is the vitamin K, which is the epoxide. This is inactive, this is oxidized. Yeah, it's called epoxide. Of course, it's oxidized. This is not the active one. The active one is the reduced one. This is the active vitamin K. How do we go from the inactive to the active? You need epoxide reductase. At that same step, you will convert NADPH to NADP+. This H was responsible for the reduction of vitamin K, i.e. activation. When vitamin K is active, it can participate in gamma carboxylation. Gamma carboxylation. Do we need oxygen? Yeah, we need oxygen because this oxygen will oxidize the vitamin K to the epoxide. And we need CO2 because it's called carboxylation, baby. You need to add a carboxyl group to convert these proteins from inactive, 2, 7, 9, and 10, into the active, 2, 7, 9, and 10. Warfarin inhibits the epoxide reductase, also known as vitamin K-dependent epoxide reductase, or VKEORC1. Who named these things? Let's talk about vitamin K. It has many sources, including the green leafy vegetables and the bacteria in your gut. And then it jumps to the intestine, from the intestine to the blood. Into the blood, in order for us to go from the intestine to the blood, this process is called absorption. You need three things. You need a robust liver with biliary system. You need a marvelous pancreas and a competent small bowel. If you have a problem with bile or a problem with the pancreas or a problem with the small intestine, you will not be able to absorb vitamin K. Hashtag vitamin K deficiency. Moreover, after it goes to the bloodstream, in this case, the blood is the portal vein, it reaches the liver. We have the gamma carboxylation of protein C, S, and Z, factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. What is the name of the enzyme that's responsible for the gamma carboxylation? It's called the gamma glutamyl carboxylase. For this enzyme to function, vitamin K has to be reduced and active. How do you activate it? Epoxide reductase. Who is going to inhibit the epoxide reductase? Warfarin. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Warfarin inhibit factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Question. Does warfarin prolong PT or PTT? The answer is both. It just happens that it's easier for us to monitor warfarin using the PT. INR. 
Here is the lovely extrinsic pathway and here is the glorious intrinsic pathway. In the extrinsic pathway, everything is short, just factor seven. So everything here is two letters, but here in the intrinsic pathway, it's longer, it takes longer, baby, longer time, lots of factors. So everything here is three letters. So here, the extrinsic factor gets activated by the tissue factor, but the intrinsic gets activated by the subendothelial collagen. How about the extrinsic pathway? How do you monitor and measure it by the PT test, prothrombin time, or the PT INR, which is the international normalized ratio? which will give you the same results whether you're in Canada, America, Mexico, Australia, Egypt, Cameroon, India, Nicaragua, South Korea, China, Japan, Ireland, Iceland, Fiji, etc. On the other hand, you monitor the intrinsic pathway using the PTT test. I've told you it's longer. Okay, who's gonna inhibit the extrinsic pathway? Mainly warfarin. Who's gonna inhibit the intrinsic pathway? Mainly heparin. In all honesty, warfarin will inhibit the extrinsic and the intrinsic, heparin will do the same. It just happens that it's easier for us to monitor warfarin using the PT and to monitor heparin using the PTT. Enough said. This stinking table is very important, and we have talked about it before. Warfarin is the same thing as coumarin, coumadin, or dicumarol. It's only exogenous. There is no natural warfarin in your body. It comes from plants. It competes with vitamin K by preventing the activation of vitamin K by inhibiting the epoxide reductase, leading to lack of gamma carboxylation, lack of the activity of the gamma glutamyl carboxylase, which will lead to deficiency of factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, protein C, S, and Z. It acts on the liver. Warfarin's onset is slow. The peak effects, oh, three days to four days. Oh my goodness, the patient will be dead. If it's an emergency or an ICU patient, go with heparin, baby. Don't wait for warfarin. Duration, it's long. Look at this. The half-life is 40 freaking hours. Administration, it's an oral drug. And by the way, the bioavailability of warfarin is about 100%, which is actually weird in all honesty. Why not? Because... I'm telling you, uh, oral drugs should not have a bioavailability of 100%. This should be peculiar to the intravenous drugs. But here, it's an oral drug and the bioavailability is 100%. Cool. You monitor warfarin using the PTINR because it acts mainly on the extrinsic coagulation pathway. If I give too much warfarin, how do I reverse it? What's the antidote? If you want something to work slowly, vitamin K. If you want something to work right now, go with the fresh frozen plasma or prothrombin complex concentrate. Historically, we used to give whole blood, but whole blood is rarely used today in the era of specialization. Does warfarin cross the placenta? The answer is yes, and it is teratogenic. Warfarin declares war in the baby. Remember the gamma carboxylation, protein S, and then protein C, this is called the activated protein C, which will inactivate coagulation factors 5 and 8. Protein S and C are the brakes, the inhibitors of coagulation. S and C suppress coagulation. Warfarin will inhibit protein S and protein C before it inhibits factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. When you inhibit the anticoagulants, you are a pro-coagulant. Hashtag warfarin skin necrosis or thrombosis. Heparin was discussed in a previous video, but today it's warfarin time. Warfarin is a former rodenticide. We used to use it to kill rats. How does it kill rats? Bleeding. Warfarin has a 100% bioavailability. Warfarin will prolong the PTINR. This is how you monitor warfarin. Mechanism of action. It inhibits epoxide reductase, which will inhibit activation of vitamin K, which will inhibit the gamma carboxylase or the gamma glutamyl carboxylase. It will inhibit the process of gamma carboxylation, which will inhibit factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, protein C, protein S, and protein Z. This will inhibit secondary hemostasis. Clinical uses or indications, prophylaxis and treatment of hypercoagulability diseases because warfarin is an anticoagulant. Examples of the hypercoagulabilities, angina, MI, stroke, DVT, pulmonary embolism, atrial fibrillation, a prosthetic, an artificial or a metal heart valve, and venous thromboembolism. Side effects, if you inhibit factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, of course, you will lead to bleeding. Oh yeah, it's called an anticoagulant. If you're anticoagulation, you are pro-bleeding. There is no way around it. Warfarin can lead to warfarin-induced skin necrosis or skin thrombosis because of the initial risk of hypercoagulation. Why? Because warfarin inhibits protein C, S, and Z before it inhibits factors 
to 7 and 10. Warfarin inhibits the anticoagulants before it inhibits the procoagulants. That's why warfarin will cause hypercoagulation before it causes anticoagulation. Warfarin can also lead to something called purple toe syndrome or blue toe syndrome. If you ever shadow a cardiologist, one of the questions that the cardiologist will ask you, take it to the bank is, hey son, big boy, tell me, what do you know about blue toe syndrome? Oh, I've never heard of it. Shut up. Just say cholesterol emboli and you will shut your cardiologist up forever. Contraindications of warfarin. If the patient has allergy or hypersensitivity, don't give it. If the patient is pregnant, do not give it. Why not? Because if you give warfarin to a pregnant mother, her baby will suffer from atrophy of the optic nerve, bone and cartilage deformities, cerebral hemorrhage. This is the notorious ABCs of warfarin. Warfarin is metabolized via the liver enzyme cytochrome P450. Which one? Because it has many subtypes. Uh, honestly, almost all of them. 1A2, 2C8, 2C9, and 3A4. 1, 2, 3. So you have the 1, 2, 3, and the ABC. The antidote is FFP and PCC. Warfarin is used for MI, stroke, and DVT. AFib, metallic valve, and VTE. In my previous video about aspirin, I've told you about aspirin drug-drug interaction, the number one interaction. This is nasty, aspirin and warfarin. If I ever hear that you gave aspirin and warfarin together to the same patient, I'll kick your butt, metaphorically speaking. Aspirin will destroy your primary hemostasis. Warfarin will annihilate your secondary hemostasis. You have a humongous risk of bleeding. This is how you lose your license and go to jail. Now it's time to talk about warfarin drug-drug interactions. First, you gotta know that warfarin and aspirin don't go together. They do not mix. Don't ever do this. Warfarin uh, binds to albumin. This is normal. Okay, therefore warfarin can cross the placenta, but it cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. Therefore it cannot reach the CSF. It also cannot reach the urine or the breast milk. Now there are other drugs that will interact with warfarin. For example, sulfonamide, such as SMX. The sulfamethoxazole will literally kick the warfarin away from the albumin. And now warfarin is left to float freely in the blood. Anything that is free is also physiologically active. If there is increased warfarin activity, by definition, there will be increased warfarin toxicity. Hashtag bleeding. Some drugs work by another mechanism. They inhibit the P450. They inhibit the metabolism of warfarin. Now, warfarin will not be metabolized, in this case, catabolized. Therefore, warfarin is here to stay. Increase warfarin activity and increase warfarin toxicity, which is bleeding. These drugs include fluconazole and acute alcohol toxicity. On the other hand, there are some drugs that stimulate P450. They stimulate the metabolism of warfarin. Now, warfarin is no more, which will lead to decreased warfarin activity. What was warfarin activity? It's an anticoagulant. Decreased anticoagulation equals coagulation. These drugs include chronic alcohol and rifampin. So, acute alcohol will inhibit but chronic alcohol will boost your P450 metabolism system. If your professor is an old dinosaur, P450 used to be known as LME, liver microsomal enzyme. If you want some 50 videos about cardiac pharmacology, go to my website medicosisperfectionalis.com and download my cardiac pharmacology course. Warfarin-induced skin necrosis was discussed in the previous video. The basic idea is warfarin inhibits protein C and S before it inhibits factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. And that's why you bridge with heparin, as we have discussed before. Some pearls for the pros. The goal of warfarin therapy is an INR between 2 and 3, with some exceptions. These exceptions include mainly mechanical valves. In this area, you should seek an INR of 2.5 to 3.5. Warfarin has a narrow therapeutic index or therapeutic window. What is the therapeutic index or a therapeutic window? In humans, it's the toxic dose, 50, over the effective dose, 50. In animals, it's the lethal dose over the effective dose because lethal dose is the dose that will kill the rat. But you cannot say, hey, patient, I'll increase the dose until I kill you. You cannot do this. So you just go with toxic dose, the dose that will cause toxicity in 50% of patients. If we have this graph with plasma concentration of warfarin on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, and here is the minimum effective concentration of warfarin, this is the maximum toxic concentration of warfarin. The area in between is the therapeutic window or the therapeutic index. In case of warfarin, we have a very narrow window. The window is even narrower.
Which means warfarin is a toxic drug. It's not something to mess up with. And that's why you should closely monitor the PTINR or I'll smack your gluteal region, rhetorically speaking. Let's talk about warfarin or the war fairy from Pikmonic. Warfarin inhibits vitamin K activation. This is the Viking King. Warfarin inhibits mainly the extrinsic pathway. Please don't forget to bridge with heparin. Side effects of coumarin include bleeding, necrosis, and problems with the P450 system. Warfarin is contraindicated in pregnancy. The antidotes include vitamin K and fresh frozen plasma TV. I love you people. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course and my cardiac pharmacology course and 50 cases about bleeding and coagulation disorders. Also, go to Pikmonic. And I'll see you in the next video where we will discuss thrombin inhibitors and factor 10A inhibitors.